Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be making a box for a customer. And this is going to be the biggest box I've ever made. And they are going to want it made from the laser engraver with 6mm MDF. And the first thing we need to do is go ahead and look at our design and we can go from there. Okay guys, the first thing we need to do is just quickly build the actual box. And it's quite easy, there's a number of websites that you can use. This one is just make a case. And basically all I need to do is just make sure I've selected millimeters. The width of this box is going to be 450 millimeters. The height is 250. And then the depth of the box is going to be 400. Like I said, this is the biggest box I've ever made. Next we need to do is go ahead and select our thickness on the wood. Um, six millimeter, as I said. We're going to leave it as an open box because I'm going to make my own lid. I don't want the finger join for the top. Um, and then we go ahead and we pick how many fingers we would like um, on the joins on the sides. So I'm only wanting two on the upright and then it automatically selects three for the bottoms. So all you have to do is go ahead and download the box. All I've done already is downloaded it and imported it into Illustrator vectorized it which is a very simple thing to do so there it is there uh, and when you vectorize it you're basically just wanting the edges of the actual box which i've got here these actually were labeled left right um, uh, left right and then this was labeled the bottom um, so don't worry about the stuff on the inside because all you want to do once you've actually vectorized it we're going to select it and export it as a dxf so once you've gone ahead and done all the DXFs, we can move over to our RDWorks program. And I've already done most of the, the work here, but basically when you're importing, all you need to do is just import the piece that you actually want. So if it's the sides or um, you know the, the, the actual top of the design, so let's just open that, I'll let it open. Okay, there it is there, we'll just zoom out. All I did was go ahead and I selected the one that I actually wanted. I changed the size and then I dragged it over the actual outline of the box which we made a vector and DXF earlier in the video. So that we don't need anymore, we'll get rid of that. And I basically just then, once I'd done that and I've moved everything into the cut lines and the cut areas that I wanted, I went ahead and just changed my settings for the actual laser engraving. I went ahead and made all of the borders to be cut purple and everything that's black I left. It's always easier to go ahead and select the easier portions. So selecting your, um, your outer pieces that are going to be cut, it's easier to select those all at once and change the color to cut and leave the actual artwork which is difficult to select everything without selecting your borders and leave that black for engraving. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and select our settings here. So I've selected our engraving. Now the engraving I'm going to be running at 450 millimeters per second. We're going to leave the settings scan and blowing yes and then what I did was just a 40% uh, power for my tube and that was it and I don't want to go more than that because that is quite deep for 150 watts worth of power we're going to go ahead and say okay or just go ahead and select the next color which is our cut line there we want it to be 20 millimeters per second if you have a much less power tube you want to select 15 millimeters per second and this will be on 75% power for, for that. And then you can go ahead and push OK. You want to remember if you by accidentally double click to go onto the settings here. If you do it on the actual output, you might just select the yes and no section, which means that if you double select output and it says no, that actually means it's not going to be doing that at all. It just is going to show that it's there, but it won't physically do the job. So you have to make sure that this output is always yes. Then from there, all I needed to do is go and select each one manually so that we can actually 
go ahead and do one portion at a time on this page. So the first thing I did was select my sides that we need to engrave and cut. Because this is such a big box, this is nearly taking up the whole bed. I've got a 1300 by 900 uh, bed, so I can't actually do more than what's already here. Um, and then once I'm ready, I'm just going to zoom out, um, leave it like that. We'll go ahead and delete what else is on the page. And then we can go ahead and you have to select and make sure it's within that page, otherwise it will not output. And then I'm not directly connected to my laser, so I'm going to be saying save to U file, which is the bottom over here. And once you've got that, you can then go and save it to any location, whether it be on your desktop or directly to a memory stick that you're going to plug into your machine. Once you've gone ahead and saved all your artwork, we can now head over to the machine with our memory stick. And remember, you can cut this in any order you want. And that means that whatever you import off your memory stick, you can always save later or delete whenever you want. But it's certainly a much easier process using a memory stick than rather connecting directly to the machine. Just before you go ahead and select your file and actually push start, a little bit of a tip here. If you've got your file selected and you move to the right hand side on your screen, you'll see it says work time preview. If you select that and enter it, wait one or two minutes, it'll actually calculate how long it takes to do the job for you without having to guess or thumb suck the time that it takes. So that's quite an, a neat little trick there. From there, we're gonna go ahead and just push cut and wait. And we're going to be using six millimeter MDF wood. Um, it's just a normal compressed wood. It's easier to cut through this than it is natural wood, so we're gonna be using this. Our settings are 75% power with 20 millimeters per second cutting speed. Our engraving is 450 millimeters per second, and it has got a 40% power. Okay, so now that it's all cut up and we have got all the components we need, the first thing I want to do is get a little bit of sunlight soap in a spray bottle with a, a lappy. We're going to spray the, the wood as well as the lappy and we want to try and clean off as much as the residue as possible. You can bypass this by having a layer of uh, masking tape on top, then all you have to do is peel the masking tape off, but I don't like it myself. I prefer cleaning the wood and don't be shy to saturate the wood. It does dry pretty quickly because it is compressed wood. It's not natural wood. Once I've gone ahead and cleaned it with a lappy and some water and soap, I'm going to let it dry for a few seconds and then we can start gluing these things together. I'm just going to be using a leftover piece of wood to put my glue on and we're going to be using normal quick dry wood glue as well as just a stick or your finger and just apply it within the finger grooves and then you don't have to put very much, you can put a lot, you can just wipe it off afterwards. And then once I've got the sides pieced together with all the glue in, you can go ahead and use your finger and swipe up anything that's left. And I'm gonna be adding a little bit extra in between the four pieces around the top, just so that it seals nicely. And then after that, I'm gonna tape it together so that it can leave it for about 10 minutes to dry properly. And then once it's dried properly, at least everything will be where it's supposed to and nothing has fallen out of place.
All right guys, I've waited about 10 minutes for this lid to dry. The bottom has got a few more minutes to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and attack our lid here with a good healthy dose of black spray paint. Now this can be any spray paint, it doesn't have to be specific. I would just use regular old Havuna spray paint that you buy at any hardware. You can even see which one I'm using. Um, I'm not doing anything special here. I'm virtually just going to apply a layer over it, wait a little bit, apply another layer until I've reached the desired effect I want. I want to turn this whole thing black from inside out. So this is going to work quite well because this wood absorbs a lot of moisture. Instead of varnishing it and waiting hours, you would rather just go ahead and spray paint it because there's nothing that you can do to actually protect this wood being synthetic compressed wood and not natural wood. So we're gonna go ahead and move to somewhere that's safe and we're gonna start spray painting. Guys, we are finally finished with this project here. I'm now done with all the spray painting that I needed to do. I've reached the desired color I'm looking for. The top needed to be the darkest section of this actual uh, box. I would love to actually have a good look at this. This came out really, really nice. I am super happy with it. Now all the customer needs to do is go ahead and pick up the lid of his box and just put it on. And there we go. Job well done. So guys. After looking at this, if you really, really like this and you want to do the same thing, you can copy this template for further jobs in the future or ideas that you have and use that website that I showed you on how to actually make the box from scratch. It really does help. marks the 10th anniversary of am.co.za in the South African market. And through that time, we have experienced considerable growth and expansion with the support of our valued customers. To mark our 10th anniversary, we have bought a warehouse at Sunny Rock in East Rand, and we will commence with renovation and construction in 2023. The facility will comprise a massive 2,000 square meter warehouse, 300 square meters of demonstration space, 150 square meters of sales space, and 400 square meters of spare part storage on the top floor. 550 square meters of showroom space on the middle floor. 400 square meters for Machine Dot Africa for machine repairs with its own dedicated entrance. And a 250 square meter tea garden and coffee shop for your convenience. Our group now comprises four businesses. AM.co.za is our main business and supplies the machines, spare parts, and consumables. Machine.Africa does the installations for our clients and handles on-site and factory repairs. Ambitious Academy ensures that our clients achieve the very best levels of productivity by providing training and certification. And our automated AI-driven online store, Buy This, brings all products online and distributes countrywide. We invite you to be part of this exciting journey as we establish our new headquarters. Watch as the process unfolds and be part of the adventure to meet all of your machinery and productivity needs with this magnificent new facility. AM.co.za. Achievement matters.